Welcome to Arab TV. This is Vic Zakour, your host for this evening. And uh, I'm so happy to have you watching us tonight because this is about an Enneagram. This is going to go into details about it. But before we get into it, I want to read to you a quote. And I hope you understand what is it. Often people do not change because they do not know who they are, why they are, the way they, they are, and what got them there. They do not know how to get out of the places they are. They find themselves in, and where they should go when they uh, when they do get uh, when they do get out. This is by Lazarus. So um, I haven't practiced on this, so it's okay. <laughs> but anyways, to help us get into the program again and to the the Negram, I have again our guest Hala. She is coming for the second time. Thank you very much, and I hope. Uh, you're going to tell us what is it all about and explain it to us, please. Okay, so uh, we were uh, discussing the Enneagram as a path of transformation and a path of change. Hence this uh, quote, which I'd like to reread, because uh, we are in a time of uh, a lot of changes and people uh, are needing more and more some kind of tools to help them with this transition. We all need them. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, the Enneagram as a, a pathway or a map for success and transformation. So uh, the, the quote is by a teacher of mine, Lazarus, and it says, often people do not change because they do not know who they are, why they are the way they are, and what got them there. And those people are you and me. So they do not know how to find out the places, uh, how to get out of the places they find themselves and where they should go when they do get out. So tonight what we're going to be talking about, uh, Vic and I, is uh, the, the Enneagram. Uh, uh, and the Enneagram, we said um, uh, in, the, in the past show, is a uh, very, very ancient system. It's a matrix for transformation, for self-discovery, and for self-understanding. So uh, uh, next, um, I'm going to be talking about the, the Enneagram and what it's all about. It basically divides humanity into nine particular uh, particular personality drives. It's like, what is it that drives humanity and people, doesn't matter your race, your gender, your nationality, anything. Uh, the Enneagram basically says there are nine different traits that drive humanity in it and drive each of our energies and our powers and our talents. So if we go to the next slide, um, I could uh, show you uh, uh, what the Enneagram is all about. So we said it was a, an ancient psycho-spiritual system that helps people in all areas that have to do with personal growth, with self-understanding and understanding of others. It's also a study of what drives and motiv motivates people to act, but also why we react in the certain ways uh, that we do. It is also a map for self-discovery and exploration and a very, very important and uh, powerful uh, operating manual for life and living. And it basically is a path that helps us become liberated from old patterns and is, uh, as we said, a pathway, a very, very effective pathway for change. So the next thing is the study of the Enneagram. Uh, which I'll describe later so uh, you can understand it better, shows us how and why we develop particular strategies uh, for survival from the time we were very young. We all develop these particular survival strategies. And it helps us become aware of what our defense mechanisms and defense behaviors and habits are. Because a lot of us have, a lot of us, actually I would say m most all of us have these ways we do things and they become uh, habits of uh, behavior that uh, a lot of the times are not very uh, effective in our lives. And so basically the Enneagram offers alternative ways of seeing what we do and made basically self-correcting. Uh, it offers uh, new ways of being, of doing, of thinking, and most importantly, offers a new way of relating that is in alignment with our highest and truest natures. So uh, the, next, uh, the next one uh, we'll talk about uh, the, 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 the nine different personality types, which is the Enneagram basically divides 
uh, all of human beings, not into personalities, because that is way too complex for us to divide all of all the billions that we are into into nine types. But that what drives the types is there are nine different ones, and they're what these are, they're nine responses to life, they're nine perspectives, they're nine styles, if you like, or they're uh, points of view. And each of these types that we're going to be talking about next uh, respond very, very specifically towards stress and fear and pressure in life in a very sort of unique way. Each type has its way of uh, sort of falling apart, if you will. And each type has a very specific and unique path that will lead out of conflict and difficulties into a life of greater harmony, of greater ease, and of positive, positive change and expansion. Next, we will see the, the nine types here depicted on this um, diagram. Enya, by the way, means uh, nine. It's from the Greek word nine. And gram means this. Uh, this is a, actually a, a, a matrix or a diagram, which what gram means is diagram, uh, Enya, nine-pointed diagram. It's based in uh, sacred geometry, so it's a very profound uh, uh, sacred geometric uh, figure here uh, that denotes these nine different types, personality types, if you will, or in Enneagram types. Okay, so we're going to start with, so um, we just, if you can look at this diagram, you're going to see the one is the reformer type of personality drive, the second is the seeker of love, the third is the achiever, and as I, I said, I will explain those to you a little further down the line, um, but for now, just know that each of these numbers actually represent a particular type of uh, Enneagram type. And the, the fourth is the romantic type, uh, also known tragic romantic, uh, uh, the creative artist is also known. The five is the thinker, also the observer. Uh, the six is the one that seeks safety and security. Uh, and that is their high, highest motivation, is to, to seek safety and security for themselves and others. The sevens, uh, this is the one that people tend to want to be sevens the most, uh, is the seeker of fun and adventure. And uh, those are the, uh, the dreamer types um, of the Enneagram. The eights, those are the, also called the boss. They're, co they're very self-reliant and like to be in charge. And they're also the leader types. Uh, and finally, the, the nine, is the peacemaker. And uh, that basically constitutes the nine different Enneagram types and the nine motivations or life forces that move us towards uh, greater harmony or greater uh, unbalance in our life. I got a question. Yeah. So number one, there's a line, two lines coming from number one. One is yeah. going to seven and one is going to four. What is the significance of that? Okay, so this, this goes into the complexity of the Enneagram, which uh, if you hold that question, I will answer That's it later. It? Okay. Yeah, okay. because otherwise it'll be a bit confusing at this point. Okay, uh, basically, one of them is the, the pathway where the, the, the personality type, the reformer, basically uh, ends up uh, under stress situations. Their life starts to deteriorate which goes to the worst aspect of another type, and where they need to go, which is the seven, they need to go to, the, to that fun and adventure to lighten up and become more whole in their type, it become you know, the, 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 the ones that are reforming the world and doing the right thing, but they're lightening up about it. They're not serious because they tend to be a serious type. Okay, so that's just in a nutshell. But okay, if we go to the next diagram, we're going to talk about each one of these types individually. Okay, and I'm going to give you some examples uh, of people in the world that you may be able to identify and say, oh wow, these, these traits kind of fit someone I know or maybe fit yourself. So the number one is called the reformer, as we said, and these people want to be right. They love to be right, and they love, more importantly, to do the right thing. Uh, they want to right the wrongs and make the world a better place. And those are people that are very idealistic and very much into uh, becoming per perfectionists. Uh, one, uh, one would say it would be they like excellence in whatever they do. And uh, they want to know the rules so that they can follow them in the most accurate way manner. These people generally have a lot of high principles, a lot of integrity and character and high morals. They're very focused, they're organized, and very purposeful in their life. 
Um, however, as we said before, there are the downsides of each of the types and there are the upsides. So the downside here is they can be extremely strict, judgmental, critical, and righteous with themselves. They can be very, very hard on themselves, criticizing themselves for not being perfect and doing things perfectly right. Uh, and therefore, that's the part that I said before, that's the, the going into the four uh, uh, and becoming, so, yeah, and then this is, they need to basically lighten up and enjoy the life and all, and all its uh, imperfections and uh, basically uh, lighten up on themselves. So that's the number one. And some examples of very famous uh, w ones that you might recognize is Mahatma Gandhi here. Uh, this is a guy, if nothing else, of extreme principle. The guy had a principle of non-violence that he applied no matter what. And that's very typical of a very elevated uh, one, famous and elevated in, in, the, in who, they, who they became. Nelson Mandela is another very high principle people. Hanan Ashrawi, if anyone knows her from a, Pal a Palestinian woman of great integrity. Um, Colin Powell, uh, uh, I don't know about integrity there, but uh, Hillary Clinton, Condoleezza Rice, Donald Rumsfeld, Martha Stewart, Julie Andrews, and Barbara Streisand. So you can see, um, if you show us the next picture here, Hillary Clinton, she wants to do the right thing. Now, whether it is the right thing or not, in their opinion, they want to do the right thing and they want to do it as perfectly as possible. So that's the ones for you. The twos, uh, if we go to the next one, these people are called the seekers of love. Okay, that's their motivation. They want love and they want it from you and they want it from everyone that they try to be very helpful and serving towards. So they're called the loving types, the helpers also, they're called the nurturers. And they're generally very kind, they're very warm, they're very giving and very inspiring. They want to be of service to, to uh, their family and to their friends. They basically want to help out. They, are, they love to please other people and uh, can be extremely altruistic and compassionate in the highest elevation of their personalities, personality drives. And they, they can be, however, in the, in, the, in the downside, the more deteriorated side, when they're stressed out, in other words, and where their life is not quite working, they're usually quite proud people, and they love to control, and sometimes they can be extremely possessive and manipulative, okay? Uh, just to know that none of these types in their deterioration look good or sound good. So don't run away from that. That's, we all have to deal with that in order to open up to our more positive uh, aspects. And here, the, the twos who love to, their thing is love, and uh, what they need to do is to open up to the full range of their emotions in order to create something special out of their love. And so I'm going to give you some examples of twos and see if you can relate to them. One of the most uh, famous twos is Jesus Christ. Uh, of course, the, probably the most elevated of twos. Uh, Mother Teresa uh, would be a, a perfect example. And Celine Dion, Evita Perron, uh, Sally Field, Florence Nightingale, Paula Abdul, Brigitte Bardot, and Princess Diana. Okay, so the next slide will show you another example. Princess Diana uh, had a lot of the helper traits. She wanted to be of service. She wanted to basically to be loved and to love. And, um, and so those are the, the, now for the threes, these are the type, uh, type A, they're really goal and success oriented. They love to do, to achieve, to strive. They're usually confident. They love to win and they love to perform to get approval. Usually very competitive, status seeking, and very, very competent. They're very driven and focused in life. Um, and so they need to move their focus a little away from themselves to create safety and security for other people and learn to become more authentic. And they, they tend to be sometimes self-deceptive. So some of these achievers, and this is, uh, like I said, the United States is an achiever nation. Countries can also have these types. And if we go to the next screen, we'd look at uh, Bill Clinton is a very famous and infamous three. Tom Cruise, Michael Jordan, uh, Jimmy Carter, Anthony Robbins, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So here's Tom Cruise. Next uh, slide is Bill Clinton. Very much a performer type, very much... Uh, uh, in the end, very self-deceptive. And uh, so that is the three types. Uh, so the four, the fourth of the Enneagram is the creative types that want to be special. 
Now, this type wants to create to be special, but they also want to create something special. They want to express themselves with all the full range of the feelings. They love to delve deep into their feelings, usually very dra dramatic people, very melodramatic, uh, and they love they have very vivid imaginations and they love to fantasize about and yearn about uh, life and uh, they tend to be kind of moody and emotionally demanding uh, sometimes and would like uh, would like special treatments they like they can be pretty entitled in their deterioration and get can get really lost in a melodrama of emotions now for them to be elevated they need to focus they need to become more disciplined and do the right thing to bring reform to the world uh, and bring their ideas so here's as famous fours Khalil Gibran, Michael Jackson, Michelangelo, a lot of the big artists in the world, a lot of which became famous after they died. Uh, Leonard Cohen, uh, still, he'll still with us, Francis Bacon, Edith Piaf, Frida Kahlo, uh, Isadora Duncan, uh, Virginia Woolf, uh, Prince, and Muammar Gaddafi, believe it or not, is a famous or very, very infamous four. So here's Michael Jackson and Prince, if you change the screen, um, you see Prince also very much in touch with the depth of their emotions and like to create something special. And uh, these two certainly did. Okay, so the next people are the fives, the five personality drives, and they are the thinkers. They love to learn, to study, to research. And basically they, they are into trying to figure out how people and how life works. They tend to be the geniuses and the visionaries of, the, of these uh, Enneagram types. They love to think and observe and try to understand. Usually love, love books, love libraries. Very highly perceptive and very observant. Uh, they want to analyze and take apart things in order to better understand them because uh, they love to be studious and inquisitive, usually very curious, intelligent, and, and generally academic and uh, are usually teachers and professors and writers and researchers. They tend to not like to be around people so much, tend to be reclusive, withdrawn and unsociable and can become a little obsessive and uh, paranoid. Now they need to step into uh, their vision, use their vision to lead in the world, to become the teachers and share. And a good example of that is Bill Gates. If we go to the next slide, we will see the famous fives are Edouard Said, um, uh, Bill Gates, Einstein, Freud, Jung, Bob Fisher, Howard Hughes, Osama bin Laden, in fact, was a famous five, uh, and Alfred Hitchcock, Nietzsche, um, Stephen Hawking, Buddha, Darwin. These were some of the uh, famous fives. And um, here's a picture of Einstein and of course, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, I call him the troublemaker from Facebook, uh, absolute genius. So uh, the next ones are and Bill Gates, of course. Here's where he's stepping into the leadership and sharing his vision with the world. And um, uh, then we want to move on to the sixes, and they are the ones that want to seek safety and security uh, for themselves and others. They're trustworthy, they're very reliable, and uh, very analytical. They're great troubleshooters, uh, problem solvers, and they're kind of at the same time uh, quite suspicious of uh, what could go wrong in a situation. Uh, extremely loyal. Uh, you always want a six on your team. If you're a business person, it's good to have a six because they're always making sure nothing could go wrong. And if there is, they're always out there troubleshooting it and um, making sure uh, the, the contingent, all contingencies are, um, are, are known. Uh, they, ha they tend to, uh, however, be indecisive in their own decision making. They doubt themselves uh, because they have a lot of, they tend to run a lot of fear and anxiety. Um, uh, as I said, they really are extremely loyal and dutiful and they're the best friends uh, that you can have. Uh, however, uh, and they tend to be over busy. They get over busy because that's a way to channel their anxiety uh, instead of uh, finding the security in themselves. They, they tend to over busy themselves uh, to hide their insecurities. And these people need to find peace and safety within themselves and uh, then spread it in the world. Uh, funnily enough, uh, here are some, here's some famous sixes, Woody Allen. Uh, and uh, Woody Allen and Napoleon and Hitler, 
the, there are two types of sixes. They're the phobic and the counterphobic sixes. And those people uh, either attack the problem right off the bat that is scaring them or they retreat from it. So that, that's why you'll see a Hitler, he'll go after whatever, for example, he went after whatever he felt threatened by and wanted to eliminate it. That's a counterphobic six in massive disintegration and deterioration. And then there is the people like uh, Woody Allen that likes to sort of, uh, you know, you can see him stutter and stammer, unsure of himself, doubting, and yet uh, extremely intelligent person. Um, the, the rest are Julia Roberts, Ellen DeGeneres, Nixon, Marilyn Monroe, Dustin Hoffman, Diane Keaton. These are examples of, of famous sixes. Go to the next screen. Meg Ryan is also a famous six. Um, and so now we go on to the sevens. And the sevens are the, funs and, and the fun, fun and adventure types. They're usually very outgoing. They're usually the lives of the party, very charming and gregarious, and everybody uh, loves to have them over, and they tend to have a lot of things on their plate and love to do a lot of things, like to have lots of their options open. However, they can become a little overindulgent and gluttonous, gluttonous and excessive and can become a little impulsive and, and scattered. But they, they really have an addictive personality that is very lovable, and they're usually the dreamer types. They like to keep dreaming things and imagine, very imaginative and dreamer-like. Dreamer and uh, uh, they try to avoid pain as much as possible. And so what they need to do is they need to think before they act, because they're so spontaneous they could be doing 10 million things instead of focusing and becoming a lot more thoughtful and uh, a, a lot more discerning and focused. And so those are the sevens. You probably have a seven in your life. Here's some handsome sevens. Uh, there is uh, George Clooney and Casanova and Brad Pitt and Eddie Murphy and Hugh Grant and Federico Fellini and Jim Carrey and Mike Myers and Robin Williams. They are very much the sort of happy-go-lucky, jack-of-all-trades. Uh, and so uh, the next picture will show Richard Branson um, of Virgin uh, Records and Virgin Atlantic and, and all of that. He was a, he's a very, very flamboyant seven, but at the same time has thousands of hundreds of companies that he runs. And so, but he does that with, that, with this great, he's a great dreamer and, and does that with a lot of heart and also uh, loves to enjoy himself and have fun and share the fun with other people. That's Richard Branson. Here's another guy, uh, Robin Williams, uh, that you probably know in the Bay Area. Our Robin Williams here uh, tends to be uh, the funny man, likes to lighten things up. That's what usually some is like, to lighten everybody's load. So next we're going to talk about uh, the eights. And these people are the self-reliant leaders. They're also called the bosses. They're usually very strong, very protective. They're fiercely independent, usually bossy and assertive and direct in their, uh, in their communications. Uh, and they love to be self-reliant and very reliable. They want to win at the game of life by setting the rules and uh, basically wanting, uh, uh, they're very capable and dynamic people. They can be the champions of the underdog. Now, these people dislike weakness and uh, personal vulnerability and um, can be quite tyrannical, controlling, intimidating, and forceful. Usually, uh, people that uh, have eights in their life know it. They just don't know that they're this type. But when uh, stressed out, they become extremely reclusive and withdrawn. Uh, and instead of that, they need to open up to receiving and giving love and not be afraid to show their big hearts. These people are the most magnanimous of all the types and um, have a huge heart that they try to very hardly to, to protect. And so some of them uh, are uh, people like um, uh, this guy here, Simon Cowell. Uh, you probably uh, have seen or heard of him. Big heart, but kind of pushy and domineering. And uh, people like Saddam Hussein, that's a very typical, very, very disintegrated uh, type eights. Donald Trump, Indira Gandhi, Charles de Gaulle, Mike Tyson, Idi Amin, Martin Luther King in the most elevated of forms, uh, and then uh, Stalin, Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt, Fidel Castro. So you see there are lots of world leaders in this type. Not of them, none of them really have reached the levels of elevation that their type could get, but certainly Martin Luther King would be one of the better examples here. Uh, so uh, Oprah, another great example, she was, she's a type eight, uh, in my opinion, in my judgment, 
and uh, what she did when she opened her heart to the world is, is so transformational for millions of people. Finally, the nines, they are the peacemakers, they are very easygoing, they're pleasant and lovely people, very friendly, they want to get along, they're devoted to peace and stability, they're basically the natural mediators and they want to find common ground, uh, they want to be accommodating, uh, and uh, they want to avoid conflict at all costs. Um, they tend to sometimes be a little lazy.